we put Kurt Bonk, and then we're following with Elliot. Who better to get us to get us out of our seats again and tell us where we need to go? Thank you. Yeah, Elliot will always tell you where to go. <laughs> this is what I work with. This is what I work with. Hello. Okay, there's the, there's a clicker somewhere. Ah, Kurt. Thank you, Kurt. Thank you. Uh, sweetie, okay. Now, this is dangerous. Elliot's going to work it. Ah. Don't press the button. Um, I want to say thank you. I am very glad to be back. For 10 years, Kathy and I did what we were told to do. We did research. We made stuff. It worked. And it, in the book, it says you're supposed to take the NSF money, and then you're supposed to then commercialize it. That's what the book says. So we tried to do that. We, we took our research, and we did it. And... Um, I couldn't comb my hair right, I didn't wear the right shoes, I couldn't be the CEO. I just couldn't do it, I just couldn't do it anymore. And so uh, we sold out and people are taking care of the companies and they're gonna do it all. But we're back and I'm very, very, very happy to be back. But I don't want to do it again. That is, I don't wanna start and just you know build a bunch of research and do a bunch of things and then do it again. No, no, the only way it's gonna work, and we've heard it I think two or three times today, is if we work together, we're gonna do something that we couldn't do before. And this talk, we're not gonna talk about our research. I mean, we have stuff, we, but we're not gonna do that. We're gonna talk about a bigger issue about how if we work together, we actually can do it. We can make a change to pedagogy, not to technology, to pedagogy, which is in fact the problem that we have to deal with. Okay, here we go. Okay, we know that there's a problem in American education, and we know that whether you watch it at home where the classroom is flipped or the classroom is not flipped, the problem is Right. The problem is direct instruction pedagogy. We still stand up in front of the classroom and we still tell the kids stuff. It doesn't matter whether it's a video, whether it's a, not a video, we still tell the kids stuff. That is the problem. No matter what kind of technology we throw at it, we're not going to make a big improvement. And the bigger problem is technology. And we read about it almost every Sunday in the New York Times. They tell us after spending millions and billions of dollars putting technology into the schools, we've, we've gotten zero results. But the, the problem is we've gotten zero results because we're not using the technology. We're using that didactic, that direct instruction um, curriculum pedagogy that Elliot was talking about, and we are adding. We are supplementing it with a little bit of technology. That's what they told me to do when I was in a classroom. I had my textbook, which gave me my roadmap of everything that I was supposed to teach, and they said, now supplement this with technology. So I found some sites that might be good, and I added them in. But that's all I was doing was supplementing. And so the problem is we're going to fix it, and we're going to fix it again with technology. No, no. <laughs> well, almost. No. Well, don't, but you'll see. You'll see. Hold on. Okay, hold on. Hold on. The, this book told us what we knew. That is, we know how people learn. And this book also talked about how can we teach, right? I got it. No, no, no. How can we teach? And Dewey said it in, in you know, millions of quotes. Here's a, one of, a, a Dewey quote. They, the teachers, give the pupils something to do, not something to learn. And the doing is of such a nature as to demand thinking. Now that just blows you away, right? I mean, that just blows you away. That's what we're supposed to be doing in the classroom, right? And we're doing direct instruction. But the problem is, it's up here, it's, it's easy, man. Just do direct, just do project-based science, just do inquiry-based science. We've been saying that for years. Easy to do, hard, easy to say, hard to do. And it's especially hard for the everyday teachers. You all have worked, in all of your research, you've worked with those early adopters, what Tom Carroll calls the uh, artists and teachers. They can do anything. <laughs> but when you start going to that next level, when you start scaling to the every, everyday teacher, that's when you run into problems. It falls apart. We've worked with over 40,000 students, and we can't get past that first level. So, so a change is happening. And the change is, Steve Jobs said that we are in the post-PC era. Well, we know where we've been. We're, we're past PC. But we started talking last year about the age of mobilism. And all you have to do is look around, and you'll see that we're in the age of mobilism. Look at you. Look at each other. And in fact, these children, it's getting smaller, smaller, smaller. These children don't walk, don't talk, don't read, but they all have mobile devices in their hands all of the time. And, but they are, in fact, 
uh, knowledge workers in training. They're going to grow up to be these people. These are two aides to Hillary Clinton. And they have in their hand one of these things or one of these things. They're mobile. They've got their mobile devices because they can. They can do all of their work with that in their hand. So the question then is this. How do we help teachers and students enact a learn-by-doing pedagogy, whether it's project-based science, inquiry-based, whatever your, your particular flavor, but how do we help them do this? Because if we can't make them, help them make them do it, we're back where we started. So now, there are two, there's teachers and there's students, so we've got to worry about this other components. We heard from Mark a, a little while ago about uh, Mark Esterberry, a very good talk about other components, but we're going to focus on the teacher and the students. So how do we help the students? We, in Singapore, we started by having the uh, curriculum people redo their pencil and paper curriculum and create one that was based um, on a model where children used technology as an essential part. In other words, what, what can you do with technology that you could not do with pencil and paper? And if you're using technology, if everybody's got it, and you have access to it 24-7 inside school and outside school, what can you do that you couldn't do before? But it required rewriting that curriculum so that technology was an essential part of it. And there were things like direct and indirect access to information that because the, the children could access their own. They were learning by doing. They were do, using GPS. They were using all the these different things to learning in context. They were taking pictures of, of artifacts that related to their science projects. It was a science curriculum, by the way. When the, when the kids were leaving the school, they would have this device in their hand. School was not over for them. They were taking a course of, on plants. And they would walk outside, and they saw the banyan tree, and they saw the root systems. So they were able then to take the pictures and then bring it back to school. That's how school is 24-7 when they have it in their hand. But the next thing was the learning is actually when they come back because we all know that the learning is in the context of the conversation. They're conversing with one another. They're sharing the information that they found. Their teacher is helping them mediate, helping them put context around all this because these children still have to pass national exit exams. So they've got to converse and share. And then what happens is, again, outside of school, they're going to use the, these technologies to bring the day back. We see this, these, these pictures, we've seen over and over again today, right? Every day, every one of us has those kinds of pictures. You need to have it because that's 24-7. That's the mobile technology, not the desktop technology, not the laptop technology. That's the mobile technology. It's all the time, everywhere, and it, it's, it's that informal that we also learn. They did a lot of informal learning. These computers, these little jobbers, these aren't computers anymore. They're much more powerful than computers. And if you don't, if you don't think about it in the right way, you think, ah, oh, it's just a computer. It's just a small one. And you can't read it. No, no, that's not the way it works. <laughs> it's not the way it works. This is a, a picture, Eric. You remember this? Eric, years ago, said, wow, you know, if we could put a GPS unit on one of the devices, then we could do something outside. Well, now, when you buy a, a smartphone, GPS unit is built in. This is Kurt, Kurt Squire um, looking at the Wisconsin campus, and on location, he then you point your, your, your smartphone out. It shows you what was happening during the Vietnam War era at that location. This is a company called Layer, L-A-Y-A-R, and, and they do a similar kind of augmented reality. I understand National Geographic Society is using this, these tools in classrooms today. This one actually is my friend Tom Moore. Why don't we take the kinds of this is Roomquake, take the Roomquake uh, technology and bring it in? I didn't have a picture for, for these fellows, but it's a great smiley picture. But Doug and their work in games <laughs> could be incorporated. And this one, now just take a close look at this. This is from Samsung. It's a clear picture. It's a clear picture. And this is going to be by the third quarter of 2012. So the real problem is this. Curriculum is the 800-pound gorilla. We are still giving teachers textbooks. 
textbooks that Gutenberg printed for us in the year one. And we're expecting them to augment it, to integrate that and turn out wonderful lessons that take advantage with, of the technology. We have got to change the curriculum and give the teachers something to work with. So we'll end, <laughs> thank, you. thank you, because that's the point. We're gonna end with the following. We go around and we've made the prediction by 2015, every child in every grade in every school will be using, will be using a mobile learning device. That's a given. It's, it's just happening now. Just go out, it's, it's called BYOD, bring your own device. But that's not the point. The point is, is it going to be uh, learned by doing pedagogy, or are we going to do what they did with Kathy? They're going to say, oh, just take the devices, integrate it, and do direct instruction. We're, we're at a cusp. If we work together, maybe we put all the pieces together, we could have that kind of curriculum and the technology working together, we might be able to make the change to 2015, where in fact all, oh, thank you. <laughs> well, all the kids are gonna be, and all the teachers are gonna be using Learn By Doing. Thank you. Done. <laughs>